Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Vacheron Constantin 31 day retrograde, a day date reference 47245, aptly named as it was a 245th birthday present from Vacheron to Vacheron. See it and own it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this Vacheron Constantin 47245. Now often described as the 245 lovingly by fans of the brand. The 47 245 came out in the year 2000, the year Vacheron turned 245 years old. Despite being a millennial reference, it has a timeless quality about it with the threads of Vacheron history deeply woven into its features. There's a collaboration with other greats in Swiss watchmaking, a Vacheron tradition, and you'll see the Gigero Lecoult based caliber on the case back to prove the point. There's a dial that is Baroque, grandiose, and has so much panache it actually pulls off those airs. And a case reinforced by lugs with so much charisma, character, and sculptural beauty, they belong in a museum in their own right. This is a watch with immense presence and a Vacheron through and through, the best of what the brand represents. You can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, this 2000 to 2009 model sits well. 37 millimeters across the round of the case, it's perfectly suited for those with a taste for traditionally sized men's dress watches or those with smaller wrists, as I believe you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference with absolutely no difficulty. In terms of thickness, the watch is relatively slim, aided and abetted by the slope of the case flank. Only 10.3 millimeters thick, this one will slide easily under a dress cuff, be it the suit jacket or the sleeve beneath. From lug to lug, though the watch appears to have a burly stance, nevertheless it is quite compact at 43.3 millimeters across the wrist. This is one of the reasons why I would recommend this reference to those with smaller forearms. It does have the presence of a much larger watch because of the full figure and the sculpted volumes of the case flank as well as the lugs. This is a Vacheron tradition, sexy lugs. They give the watch a heck of a lot of gravitas without giving it a heck of a lot of wrist real estate demanded. This is a watch you can wear easily. Now if you note, you can see the curved spring bars allow the lugs to be drilled quite close and also allow the strap to pivot completely down, so perpendicular to the sweep of the case band around the curve of a smaller wrist. That's due to the use of the curved spring bars. Now the strap itself is a dark rectangular scale alligator leather semi-gloss monotone stitch with a thin but sheer edge. It's not folded as you can see the overlapping layers of the material and then on the underside a supple calfskin. The pin buckle is a simple, beautiful, low profile and easily adjusted Maltese cross motif Vacheron rose gold unit. Moving back to the case, I can't overemphasize the power of these few creases, seams, fluted junctions and the lip of the bezel where it abuts the case flank. You can see the shoulder of the individual lugs so beautifully sharp, strident, masculine and then the sensuous curve of the case flank, feminine. It's a countervailing influence against the strength of the lugs. There's also a handsome seam that flows from one fluted shoulder to the other side through the rolled almost domed profile of the lip that runs the circumference of the case top. There's a lot going on in a very compact space. The economy of line and the effect achieved is extraordinary. As I said, this is Vacheron at its best. Now, since the watch is no longer on the wrist, we can get a little bit closer and look at the watch in greater detail. All of high polish, a timepiece of this size wears it well. You'll note a pusher adjuster on the flank, so you don't need to use a pusher tool to adjust the retrograde date complication. A little bit of dynamism on the slow crawl of a dial that otherwise lacks any constant motion. Rather, it makes the most of its fine detailing to animate proceedings. The dial itself features a crosshatch pattern. I'm, I'm going to try to bring that. There, you can see it to good effect. I'm going to try to bring that out. There's a crosshatch pattern. The dial is actually a matte ivory base, which pairs beautifully with the rose gold of the case and the rose gold of the baton style hands, as well as the indices and stylized Roman numerals. 
we can probably go a little bit lighter with aperture here. And now you can see to good effect that this dial is anything but a traditional sterile silvered Geneva splash. This is one that dives deep into the traditions of Vacheron with big burly dimple style indices intermediate between large highly stylized and thick hand laid Roman numerals. You can see that there is a railroad track outboard the better to read the minutes with precision and you'll note that the retrograde date indicator is both skeletonized at its tip and blackened for contrast. There's a sunken sub-register for the day of the week and you will note that there is a dimple pusher on the case flank judiciously hidden at the bottom of the case band underneath the strap that can be used for adjusting the day of the week display. This is a very convenient watch. Always useful for telling time, useful for dating emails, memos, correspondence, with the everyday convenience you get from automatic winding. Now, spare a thought for that crown as it is absolutely divine. Beautifully profiled with a barrel and knurled shoulder and a domed profile when viewed in cross section. Maltese cross emblem on its top to give it character and a little bit of a kerf or an outcropping on the underside so you can easily dig in your nail and take command of proceedings. Now the case back itself, a beautiful vista. Display case back on top of what Vacheron Constantin describes and we're going to get as close as we can here. But what Vacheron Constantin describes as reference 1126. Now, reference 1126 looks an awful lot like a Chagere Lecoult 889. And indeed, that's exactly what this is. There's an R31 Vacheron Constantin retrograde module. That's built by Vacheron and mounted on top of the JLC 889 base. It has automatic winding bi-directional. You can actually see the old bi-directional rocker system that JLC used, the reverser rockers running off the intermediate reduction wheel of the winding system so that it always always winds the ultra-thin open mainspring barrel in a single direction. You'll note all of the screws are true kiln-fired, heat-oxidized blue, and they're gorgeous. Cote de Genève laid across the winding mass as well as the bridges with a perlage on the base plate, beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, 36 joules. It does, despite the lack of a seconds hand, it does feature a hacking setting, so you can actually stop the balance and set the watch even though it lacks a seconds hand. Now, it is adjusted in a chronometer-like five positions, so this is not just high horology, thin and fine, as the basic JLC-89 is just over three and a quarter millimeters thick. It is also quite precise. The 889, renowned for being a precise movement that can be adjusted with great resolution, and you'll note the Triovis micro adjustment mechanism on the balance for good measure. In five positions, like I said, it is regulated like a chronometer and capable of keeping that level of time. 21 carat gold mass on the balance, or I should say on the winding mass. The balance bouncing away, a high grade balance with a high grade hairspring. JLC at its finest. Water resistant to 30 meters, so this isn't one for taking the plunge this summer, but I can't think of a better watch to wear alongside the water on the French or Italian Riviera. See it and own it on our website.